is up, humanoid nation. So today's video I'm gonna be reacting to is by Fart Farts? By Farts. Fart Fun Zone. If I haven't seen that times three times fast. Anyways, ten times wrestlers forgot to finish mid-match. Let's do this. So wrestling is a bit of a juggling act, not just because you're tossing 200 pound slabs of prime rib around the ring for entertainment, but also because you gotta remember your spots, you gotta react to the audience, stay in character the entire yeah. time, remain aware of where everyone is, and do the finish properly. It's lots of plates to spin. And if you're in WWE, Vince has also filled them all with whipped cream because he's yeah, 10 years your old. Too. So it's no wonder then that sometimes things slip through the cracks. Someone out of position here, a fumbled spot there, or the entire finish to a match just beautiful sunshines its way out of your spotless mind. Because yes, it has been known for wrestlers it, to completely to forget the finish to matches like I sometimes forget the, um, the lead in th this one's about people forgetting stuff. Read the screen. I don't know. Before we crack on with the list though, why not give Parts Fun known a subscribe if you haven't already because, well, That's thanks cool. Avante Lee. By the time Sting versus Samoa Joe, Victory Road 2009. By the time the infamously terrible Victory Road 2009 pay-per-view took place, Samoa Joe had just joined the main event Mafia. Uh, he was yeah, sporting a fake face tattoo slash war paint thing and carrying Old a machete. It was a look that screamed, I do murders, and I've recently attended a kid's birthday party. At the show, he and Sting had a slightly below average match, perhaps best known for Taz's TNA debut, an entrance so epic it allowed Joe to power out of the Scorpion Death lock as if Joe was the Undertaker and Taz was the urn, but really as if Sting just couldn't be asked to hold it anymore and let go which is what happened. After this little bit of awkwardness was over, Joe was supposed to put Sting away with a muscle buster, but Sting forgot the finish, so Joe simply popped on the Kokina clutch, probably asked Sting to tap very nicely, and the icon submitted instead. The British Bulldog versus Bret Hart, SummerSlam 1992. Oh, yeah, Most will agree that Bret Hart is one of the greatest minds in wrestling history. Awkward. Meanwhile, Davy Boy Smith had the talent, but definitely not the Sherlockian mind palace recall of Hart. That, Bret often speaks about putting together his matches in his head prior to heading out through the curtain rather than calling it in the ring. In this case, he not only planned out an entire match, but talked Bulldog through their 25 plus minute would be classic. All the best laid plans of mice and men. Because it turns out Brett was barking up the wrong tree telling the bulldog because bulldog was more goldfish in this case. Hart has since said that Smith wasn't in the best frame of mind going into the biggest match of his career. And as Brett took him over with a headlock early doors, bulldog let slip that the 25 minute plus epic had just slipped his mind. Which is understandable really. I can't remember five seconds ago I was saying something about goldfish or something. Let alone 25 minutes of wrestling. But Brett could and he did and he used those knowledge powers to to lead Bulldog through the greatest performance of his career. Sting versus Hulk Hogan, Starcade 1997. Oh, now there could be a whole list of matches where the referees forgot the finishes, such as the Rock and Kurt Angle at No Way Out 2001, or when Trent and Pac had to end their match early on Dynamite in 2019, and Bryce Remsburg just didn't get the memo. But for this list, we'll include the infamous main event of Starcade 1997. I mean, Nick Patrick had a handful of wrestling matches, so technically he is a wrestler for all you sticklers out there, but in this case, Patrick yeah. was the referee and was supposed to administer a fast count allowing Hulk Hogan to pin Sting, which would have set up Bret Hart to come out, reverse the decision in the wake of the Montreal Screwjob. Instead, Patrick just completely forgot to do a fast count and Sting was pinned completely normally. The rest of the finish then just carried on as planned, but just with, you know, no justification. So Sting and Bret Hart ended up looking like spend? idiots and I bet Hogan loved it. I bet he absolutely Loved it. Yep. Kenta versus Tomohiro Ishii, NJPW Royal Quest. Now, we all know that wrestling is essentially pretending to be dropped on your head for a living, but sometimes head and mat do meet, as do head and fist, head and foot, and head and floor. What I'm saying is it's quite easy to get smacked silly. So that means that, unfortunately, some of the silly goose you've gone and forgotten about this list comes as a result of concussion, well, as is the hard. case in this bout between Kenta and Tomohiro Ishii at Ishii Royal Quest in 2019. The pair had been putting a, on a clinic a until Kenta was seemingly knocked out by a German suplex, and the match fell apart. Never mind being able to remember the finish, Kenta could barely remember how to use his legs. Ishii did do his best to keep things together until Kenta could hit the go to sleep and walk away with a never open weight title, but it was a hot mess. Fun fact though, this was held in London and I went to it and I had forgotten that until I started writing this list. I blame beer though, rather than German suplexes. Oh, Mickey James versus Victoria versus Melina in a house show in 2007. Oh, one, there are a surprising player? amount of title changes in this list and here comes another one. Because during a WWE 
WWE house show on April the 24th, 2007, Mickie James and Victoria challenged former Quizlemania champion Melina for the much less important WWE Women's Championship in a triple threat match. But the thing is, the whole thing got bollocksed right up when Victoria forgot to kick out of the pin from Mickie James, which meant that James accidentally won the title. Thankfully, everything was rectified when Jonathan Coachman booked a second title match so Melina could get the belt back from James, but it was a proper palaver if you ask me. But still, it gave us a cheeky bonus women's match, which is still one more than your average dynamite. See that, biased fans? That's called balance. Gene Kaniski versus Dory Funk Jr., the NWA title match on February the 11th, 1969. Here is yet another match where the title changed hand because Where's one of the competitors plain forgot the finish. Match, but in this case, it's not Mickey James no, no, accidentally no, no, no. walking away with the women's championship. It's just the champ chucking away the most prestigious title in wrestling because he'd forgotten what kind of match he was in. So here's the deal. NWA world champion Gene Kaniski was putting the title on the line against Dory Funk Jr. at a show in Tampa, Florida. Now, world title bouts were often contested under two out of three falls rules at the time, but this was scheduled for one fall. One fall! And only one fall was counted when okay. Funk locked Kaniski in his spinning toehold finish early in the fledgling match, and Kaniski submitted, losing the title in the process. Afterwards, Gene said many times that he was convinced that the match was two out of three falls, but instead his 1,131 day reign as champ came to an end thanks to an earth-shaking brain fart. Oh, okay. Tyler, your sex tape. Well, Dean Malenko versus Billy Kidman balls. sold out 2000. Oh, oh, time for match. another round of What's the Stipulation? What the this fuck? time starring that Dean Malenko can. and Billy Kidman at sold out back in the year 2000. And this one's a bit of a weird one, Were coming at peak the... stupid during... Would you even confuse Dean Malenko, the wrestling machine slash encyclopedia? Oh, what the hell's going on in the match? You know he done fucked up, WCW. WCW's lifespan. The ruling for the match between Malenko and Kidman said that you would be disqualified if you left the ring at all. Like a really sh two-man rumble. It's a dumb stip, and clearly not a memorable one either, as Malenko forgot the rule about two minutes in, left the ring, and was disqualified, ending the match in a big old womp womp. You got to assume that whatever the planned finish was, it would have been much better than this damp squib, but then again, it was 2000's WCW, yep. so no guarantees. WCW. Sin Cara, WCW. Daniel Bryan, and Ezekiel Jackson versus Wade Barrett, Ted DiBiase Jr., and Cody Rhodes. This is the one where Cody said, Ted came into the back and said, that referee tried to fuck on me. It's the June 17th, 2011 version of SmackDown. Ugh, it's never not fun to bring up the he was trying to f*** on me match. Cody yeah. Rhodes made this match infamous with his retelling of the story, but it has also earned a place on this list like twice. On the June 17th, 2011 episode of SmackDown, the eclectic team of Sin Cara, Daniel Bryan and Ezekiel Jackson took on the team of Wade Barrett, Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase Jr. With this being the original flavoured Sin Cara in the match, you can all but guarantee it didn't go as planned. He the forgot the planned Cara. finish, which was supposed to to see Ezekiel Jackson be given the big rub as the featured performer ahead of Capital Punishment, where he was going to go on to win the Intercontinental Championship from Barrett. But why do that when you got a wicked sweet mask and a Devil May Care attitude and you want to hot tag in Daniel Bryan instead? Which is exactly what Sin Cara did, changing the entire flow of the match, rubbing off the rub that was supposed to go on Jackson and smearing it onto Daniel Bryan instead. Oh, Gross, and it was only worsened by Ted DiBiase forgetting to kick out of Bryan's corner dropkick, so you have an absolute cluster F*** on me of a match. But I mean, this is also pre-Yes Movement Brian, so could this be the rub that started it all? The seminal rub gets worse the more you add in front of yeah, rub, Yeah, it really, does get worse now. Adrian Neville versus Sami Zayn versus Tyson Kidd. NXT House Show, November the 13th, 2014. Now, this one is a good example of how some quick thinking can save you from near disaster, because back in the days of old NXT, 2014 to be precise, at a house show in Glasgow, then NXT champion Adrian Neville was taking on Sami Zayn and Tyson Kidd in a triple threat match. Now, for whatever reason, Zayn forgot to kick out of a pin attempt by Kidd, essentially giving Tyson a shock win, and the crowd at some rando house show in Glasgow the chance to see the very newsworthy change of NXT champion. Except some quick thinking on the part of the ring announcer stopped that from happening because after the pin they announced that Sammy had been eliminated from the match turning it into an elimination match you hit him with Big a surprise match. stipulation which allowed Kid and Neville to get the whole thing back on track and end things the right way with we Neville retaining his We're championship Cactus Jack versus Sandman 
ECW. Everything from Cactus Jack Ooh, versus This Sandman. one is a difficult Everything watch. In that During match. an ECW house show, Cactus Jack and Sandman were scheduled to have a last man standing deathmatch type thing hitting each other a lot it's ecw the idea being that the only way to win was to make your opponent stay down for the 10 and count sandman the only up issue and up and up. with that was that sandman was badly concussed during the match leaving him with no idea what was going on oh, around him concussed. and completely really forgetting drunk. how to bring an end to the match and with a stip stating that someone had to stay down for a count of 10 sandman who was scheduled to lose just refused to stay down at all. So what yeah. was a pretty grisly match already devolved into Foley just having to batter Sandman over and over again in the Get hopes down, that he Sandman, would stay for down for a ten and blessedly bring the match to an end. I would argue that there is such a thing as also calling it all off too, but it's wrestling, isn't it? And it's, why that just never happens, does it? Wrestling. And yeah. that's our list. Are there any other examples of people forget? Yeah, Sandman. I had no idea he was concussed for real. I seriously thought he was just being drunk as fuck, like always. And the fact that he's a Sandman, so yeah, he doesn't sell anything. But yeah, he's very entertaining to watch, because he's a goddamn Sandman. But anyways, that's it for now, Human Nation, Human Freak Out. Bye! Pasito, pasito, 